And we're back with more exciting action. We're here at the UMAAI United Martial Arts Alliance International Kempo Camp. And we're here in Greeley, Colorado. And we're here with a very special guest. And simply stated, this is one of this is one of the main reasons I came to this event. Uh, again, Kiyoshi Neil Horston from Scotland. It's a pleasure to be here. And it's great to have you on the show. So happy. Thank so, you, Kempo Joe. So the first question I always ask all my interviewees is, uh, how did you begin in the martial arts? Well, I started martial arts uh, on an island, on the Orkney Islands in Scotland. Um, I, I wanted to learn self-defense. Uh, I was basically attacked one night and I didn't have a clue what to do to protect myself. So I found this martial arts school. It was a jiu-jitsu school. And that's how I got into the martial arts. Wow. Now, again, for, for our, our viewers with the popularity of the term jiu-jitsu, uh, the term means the gentle art. And again, there are many different styles of jiu-jitsu. So uh, uh, talk to us a little bit about your training and... Um, how long did you stay at that particular jiu-jitsu school? Well, the training back in the day, I started martial arts in 1985. Okay. And I was 18 years old at the time. And the training was say, through the World Jiu-Jitsu Federation. And some people may have heard of uh, Soki Robert Clark. He was the um, head, head uh, instructor of the World Jiu-Jitsu Federation. So I was within that group. And the training was uh, your standard jiu-jitsu, uh, the low kicks, mid-level kicks. That suited me because I'm quite stocky, small, high kicks doesn't suit me. So that was perfect for me, that jiu-jitsu system. Another thing I loved too in that system um, was the groundwork, the groundwork techniques. Um, loved going through like about 15, 20 different combinations at a time. So no, it was really good. Really enjoyed that at the time. Um, the jiu-jitsu that I studied at that time was very much about offsetting balance, minimal strikes, one basic strike, and throwing someone over, coming into locks with it. You know? So that was the kind of training that I did back in the day in that school. And uh, I stayed with the World Jiu-Jitsu Federation um, until just after I gained my first degree black belt, which I gained down in Liverpool at their headquarters. Ah, okay. In 1988. Excellent. So, uh, um, um, uh, Master Clark, uh, again, the founder of the uh, World Jiu Jitsu Federation, was very prolific in, in Europe. Uh, he did was, uh, yeah. several books. Actually, I have, a, I have two of his books on, on the topic oh, cool, of Jiu Jitsu. Cool. So, I was very familiar with him. Uh, and you mentioned, again, for our, for our viewers who uh, may not be familiar with martial arts and jiu-jitsu, uh, the groundwork is known as niwaza, or mm -hmm. ground techniques. And again, uh, a lot of times they will use what's called a single strike or a temi to, uh, uh, we say, uh, we uh, tenderize a tough opponent, as, <laughs> it, as it were, and then set them up for the throw of That's a fall and break down. Now, so how did you get involved from the jiu-jitsu into kempo? Yeah, branching into kempo. So basically what happened there was... I wanted uh, to go to a system that had more dynamic strikes in it. And uh, that was more, in my opinion, more street orientated. So um, I got in touch with a Kempo Jiu Jitsu master, he was at the time, he's now a grandmaster, and his name is Hanji Peter Brown. And uh, Hanji Brown he lives in London, in England. And I went down, trained with him, and I gained my second, my third degree black belt uh, rankings in Kempo Jiu-Jitsu with Hanji Peter Brown. Uh, he's a fantastic instructor. Um, I learned so much from Hanji Brown. Heck of a lot, you know. And I, I believe that um, you're aware of Hanji Brown. Oh, yes, very yeah. much so. Yes, uh, Hanji Brown, um, many people aren't aware, I, I have a very extensive uh, martial arts book, video, and magazine collections, and I would collect uh, of the uh, British magazines, Combat Magazine, Combat, yeah. Martial Arts Illustrated, mm -hmm. so I'd see the articles, and uh, uh, saw about him, and learned about him, and then met him at, I believe, one of the Gathering of Eagles, or one of the other martial arts mm -hmm. events I did, but I had the opportunity to meet him, because he had also worked with a couple of my instructors, notably uh, David German in the Art of Thai, yeah. and uh, Professor uh, Feliciano Kimo Ferreira in Kempo Jitsu. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so, I, so when you mentioned, you mentioned, but I want to talk about a very important side, side light of this, okay? 
you're in Inverness. Yes. In Scotland. In Scotland. And you went to Great Britain. Guys, for those of you, and I know some people will obviously know, but others won't. We're talking islands here. Mm -hmm. We're talking you left the island of Scotland and went to the island of Great Britain or the UK. How long each way is it to go to take a class with him just in that? Oh, that's, that's a distance. To go down to London, you're talking right. 500 miles, you know. So it was a case of them um, going, going on a plane a couple of times a year, learning, bringing him up to Scotland as well. Wow. So that's the way that we did that, wow. you know. Um, but yes, I, I enjoyed my, my time in the Cambridge Jiu Jitsu system with Hanji Brown. Um, then my martial arts journey moved on to um, purely focusing on Kempo. I, w I wanted to kind of um, pick up more of the Kempo systems itself. Uh, so I got in touch with uh, Soki Andy McGill. Soki Andrew McGill. He's a 10th degree black belt uh, from uh, Dartford in England. And he, 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 he's a grandmaster in Kempo and he's very good at what he does. So I stayed with him for a time, learned some skills from him. So that's how I transitioned from Jiu Jitsu to Kempo Jiu Jitsu to Kempo. Just blend it all and mix it in, you sure. know? Yeah. Well, obviously, we're here for the, uh, uh, again, the uh, United uh, Martial Arts Alliance International Camp. Tell me how you got involved with Professor Robert Oss and, of course, his organization. That's a good question. So the internet started roughly about 1995. And uh, what I did was I ran a, a, an email, a Kempo discussion group. And I think I was the first person to have a Kempo discussion group. Uh, so people kind of uh, found that, they came across that. And that's how I got in touch with um, Professor Muro through okay. that, uh, through one of his friends that recommended him to sure. me. Uh, so then uh, I got in touch with Professor Muro, gave him a phone call, said, I'd love to hook up with you, meet up with you. Um, I'd like to learn skills, you know. Would you take me on board, be a mentor? Because uh, at that time I was looking for a mentor figure, you know. I had been a Ronin for some time, so I was looking forward to that. So, and uh, he graciously took me on board, and that's how I got involved with Professor Muro. Excellent. Now, so you were working with Professor Murrow. Where did, where did Professor Austin come in? How did you meet up with Yeah, him? he came in because what happened there was, after I contacted Professor Murrow, uh, just slightly after that, um, two of Kiyoshi Austin's students came over to Scotland to visit, because they've got heritage in Scotland. Uh, so they came over to visit. And uh, Kiyoshi Austin was already in the discussion group by email. Really? So we coordinated that, that way. Yeah, that's how I knew him. Wow. So he was involved in that. So they said, oh, you know, you've got to meet him, you've got to come over and things like that. Oh. So then, you know, I brought him over, he came over and we've become fantastic friends since wow. then. Wow. Yeah. By the way, I was involved with that group at that time and we had them fascinating. That and also America Online had a better credible uh, Kempo message board as well. So you never, you know, you'd be talking when you find out, yeah, that guy's a 10th degree or he's an 8th degree, degree. And on the boards. And it was amazing, the insight and the information that would be given. Because when I, when I started that discussion group, it was 1995. And then uh, Kempo Joe, I met Kempo Joe at the Governor of Eagles. Yep. Uh, the big map. Well, he'll talk about it in a moment, no doubt. But <laughs> 1999, so on you go then. I'll oh. interview you for this yeah, one. Geez. Well, <laughs> Tell them about yeah, the, uh, how, how we met. So, um, the first Al, one, yeah. Al Tracy uh, in 1999 decided to create a huge event where he could bring as many of the different Kempo groups together in one gathering. He called it the Gathering of Eagles. And again, other people have used that term for it, but it was really a Kempo Gathering of Eagles. And we had the opportunity, we had the opportunity Definitely. to meet so many incredible masters and grandmasters. Absolutely amazing. You know, it was, it was like a who's who in, in various systems of Kempo and, and certain individuals, like we talked about Ralph Castro, literally coming in and doing uh, the entire syllabus of forms from white to black belt all throughout the day. Incredible. Um, individuals like uh, Tino Tulio Sega from Lima Lama, uh, Victor Sunny Gascon from Kata Zempo Goshen Jutsu, Adriano Imperato from Kaju Kenbo, um, people from every, literally, literally Tracy Kempo, Parker Kempo, you name it, someone was there. Fantastic um, event. Yeah. yeah, phenomenal. And that's when we first met. That's when we met. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. And I do remember you being in the discussion group too. Yeah, I oh, you that, bet. Yeah, I call that Kempo, K E M P O stroke K E N P O yeah. discussion group. Yeah. And now you also at that time 
um, a lot of people are not familiar with an organization that you put together. Mm -hmm. You were the originator and founder of the World Martial Arts Society. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Yes. Tell me about that. Yeah, I wanted to um, expand my knowledge, and the way that I felt I could do that was by uh, forming this international martial arts organization called the World Martial Arts Society. Um, I ran it for one year. I really enjoyed my time uh, running that group. I had uh, lots of masters and grandmasters coming over. Professor Muro came over. Uh, we had people from Europe. We had uh, Hanji Jorgen Jorgensen uh, over there who uh, Kempo Joe was connected with through Kempo International. Kempo International. Yeah. 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 We had um, Henrik Nilsson from Sweden. We had uh, David Natan over. We had just loads of different people over. And we all uh, had great times. We had seminars and, you know, it was nice to make contacts and connections and all that. Um, I must admit that I did find it a little bit tedious at times dealing with the politics. Oh, yeah. You know, exactly of the, the martial arts. So uh, I decided after setting up and building the, the foundation of the World Martial Arts Society to step aside and uh, I handed over to um, uh, Henrik Nilsson yes. in Sweden and he ran it for a few years. But I don't think there is much going on with it at the moment. I think it's uh, pretty quiet for now. But yeah, it was an experience. I remember with Ron Carlson being at one of the events and them having the uniforms and the the, mm -hmm. the, the, the somewhere I finally got one of the patches and the people like it was like cool. and the people that was like going it was like no you know what I'm saying I know what I know who created this I know about the whole you know so, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah it's a fascinating group so now for our general public and our viewers who are involved in martial arts as well yep. Um, what would you say again? You do your, your again the Scottish Kempo Academy. When was that founded? Well, the Scottish Kempo Academy it started out as a Scottish uh, Kempo Jiu Jitsu Academy uh, back in uh, nineteen ninety two, and then it evolved into the Scottish Kempo Academy. You know, it's all about moving forward, never being stagnant. You know, always looking uh, to better yourself, to improve yourself, to improve your school, your group, the benefit of everyone. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, the Scottish Kempo Academy I developed. The system that I um, uh, founded is called Yoshin Kempo, and Yoshin, Yoshin, Yo means willow, Shin means heart, and then obviously we all know what Kempo means. Well, this is a martial arts interview, so mo some of you may not know what Kempo means. Right, for our, for our viewers, Kempo means the law of the fist, and you have the beautiful story about why the ocean. Oh, oh definitely, please. yeah. To keep it simple, there was a doctor in Nagasaki uh, a few hundred years back, and he was in Japan studying martial arts at that time. And he saw this um, oak tree, this strong oak tree with the snow on it. And what was happening was the snow was breaking the branches and the weight of the snow. So he also noticed the willow tree, the supple, the pliable, the flexible willow tree with the snow falling off it so he developed a system called Yoshinu Jiu Jitsu so that's my homage to that and that is the style of Jiu Jitsu that I study nationally Yoshinu Jiu Jitsu so Yoshin Kempo blended into that so that's how the system comes together Excellent. so we have going back again uh, Kempo Joe going back a little bit here um, when I started out the Kempo system, the, the Kempo, the, sorry, the Jiu Jitsu system was mainly um, block, one punch, throw, locks. But the Kempo system would be strikes combined with throws as well. So we took a number of the Jiu Jitsu. Um, throws out of it, so there are less jiu-jitsu throws of it, more kempo. Mm. But um, you may know this, but my understanding is that uh, kempo is an old name for jiu-jitsu. Kempo is a, is a name that, that um, at, and when we look at the history of Japanese martial arts, um, we look at overall understandings. For instance, 
Uh, we talked about just the other day, we're talking about how throws in jujitsu normally were originally taught against the joint, to break the joint as the person was thrown. Mm -hmm. Then people like Jigido Kano, who founded the art of judo, judo yeah. turned the joints so they were bending and going with the flow, similar to the willow analogy, and, and yeah. so the person was not injured, but his throw was still applied, so they could do that in a sports atmosphere, yeah. or make sure that people come to the next class so their arm wasn't broken. But um, So that's the general overall principle of the combination of striking as when jujitsu, you hear terms like ate waza, or uh, atemi waza, or, uh, or um, uh, yowara. And these were all terms that applied to the striking elements within the overall art of jujitsu. Well, as they separate, and then one of the terms was kempo. Mm -hmm. it, yep. uh, it was the understanding of the Chinese martial arts, striking martial arts. Chinese influence. And how they were applied to the Japanese. So, yeah, very true, very yeah. accurate. And um, so. Uh, you know, I, I'm really excited to see it, and I'm really excited. To, so let me explain. This is really the first time I've really gotten to see uh, Kiyoshi Horston and, and his students and, and his wife Helen demonstrate his art. So it's been wonderful, and we're going to have him demonstrate uh, techniques after our, our interview. But um, uh, really excited about it. Very, very, very enjoyed what I've seen so far. Thank you. Now, for our, our viewers, how can they get in touch with you and how can they find out more about you? The easiest way to get in touch with me, Kempo Joe, is to go to kempo.co.uk. That's kempo, K-E-M-P-O dot co dot U-K. And uh, send me a message. Excellent. Nice to hear from you. And I just want to say as well, it's been a pleasure. Uh, it's Spending some time with you at this Thank camp, you. you know. Thank you. And uh, I, I also want to add in that uh, Kempo Joe is the encyclopedia of Kempo. <laughs> You're in good hands with this guy. And not just Kempo, martial arts in general. Uh, I was very impressed here in the interview to learn that he actually knew about Sylvia Clark. Uh, he had read his books, seen some of his videos. And he also knew about Combat Magazine in the UK that used to be on the go and Martial mm -hmm. Arts Illustrated too. Yeah. And, uh, um, yeah, it's been fun, and it's still fun, and we're going to have a great time. Awesome. And uh, we have to talk, we've got to take one moment, and uh, we've talked about, we've talked about um, uh, your, your work, we've talked about your wife, Helen, and helping you out. Tell us about the seven samurai that you brought with the you. The seven samurai. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so myself and uh, my wife, Helen, Kiyoshi Helen, uh, she's a seventh degree black belt. Uh, I'm an eighth degree black belt, by the way. Um, not as high a level as Han Shi, eh, Han Shi Joe, but hopefully one day. Um, so what we've done is we've brought seven people, seven students over with us, and we've dubbed them the Seven Samurai. <laughs> um, I, I did initially say uh, that they were called the Magnificent Seven, but then one of my guys pointed out but that was based on the uh, Italian, the, 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 the Italian version of a spaghetti western of the Seven Samurai original movie. Mm -hmm. So it's great having a team here with us. Oh, yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And I've been watching them beat the living daylight. <laughs> such a joy to behold. And now we're not talking all black belts because we have, uh, is it um, Ron yeah, but, who's uh, just got his yellow belt? Mm -hmm. So yeah, absolutely. We've got uh, Daniel. Hi. Daniel got his yellow belt recently. Yeah. Yeah, so for us, you know, it starts at white, it goes yellow, so it gets darker all the time, the ranks. Um, we've got Daniel, we've got Rod with us as well, and Rod is a brown belt, currently a brown belt. Uh, we've also got uh, Gemma with us, Gemma's a first degree black belt. Uh, we've got Reese with us, he's a second degree black belt. We've got um, Sean with us, he's a fourth degree black belt. We've got... Um, Kevin, who is a fifth degree black belt, and we've got Ben, who is a first degree black belt with us. So a good mix. Oh, definitely, definitely. They, you can tell they're they're having a field day. Yeah, they're having so much fun. Oh, that's a joy, it's a joy. The mud king. Now let me. Ask, so you mentioned about the email. Uh, do you also have a website for your your studio as well? If that is our website, we're online. Oh, okay. We're online. Very good. Yeah. Excellent. Well. There you have it. And again, I'm very honored and privileged to finally have Neil on our show. And uh, we'll be back with more exciting action here in Greeley, Colorado, for day two of the United Martial Arts Alliance International. Oh, and by the way, one last question. Isn't it you...
that caused the organization to add international? Yes, it was me. Good point indeed. Got to talk yeah. about that. He yeah. truly made the organization international. Absolutely, yes. Well, and hopefully we're going to get more, more countries on board. There you go. Again, thank you so much, Neil. Means a pleasure, Hanji. And uh, we'll be back with more exciting action here on Martial Arts Today TV. Stay tuned. Here. Okay, slow it down a little bit, you guys. So from here, we're going to here, right? From here, through here. Alright, slow it down a little bit. Punch comes in, leg punch. So we're working on leg punches, yeah? Grab the rest. Someone told you that here, yeah? See? I'm going to step in, get my power, and here. I'm going to here now and roll over like this, see? <coughs> Very gently apply a wrist lock from there. <coughs> Good. I'm tempted to go further, but I'm not going to. <laughs> okay. Right, so. Punch comes out. One, two. I will kick this along, I'm ready to go from here, yeah, roll it over, and here with this, and lock up. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Yes, guys. From here now, I'm going to shuffle step in again. I'm going to repeat the head backwards. I'm going to take my foot down here, and I'm going to straighten my leg. See, trap it over my leg with this. Okay, so let's do this again. One, two, three, eight. Right, let's go. A throwing technique. Right? Let's get that goal. See how we get on the rest. Slow this down. We're going to go bananas for this. So, um, come here. One sense to come in, let's, let's go back to the right, punch down. Okay, so lock the hook. Yeah, lock the hook. Chop into the neck here. Step in, shuffle step. This throw is called an inside hook. That's been keeping it simple. Watch it in. Punch comes in, block, chop the neck. Shuffle step. Here, now, see my arm go? See my heel? I mean, sure. sorry, see my heel, yeah? I'm going to place my heel down to the ground. I'm going to repeat, sends his head backwards. Keep him down here. Target area? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like enough to go box on. We got box on. Going guard? No, no. Okay. Got the idea. Yeah? Just call them inside of the throw. That's the one crazy finishing techniques. Yeah. Right. Happy? Oh. Okay, let's go! Go, sir! And then the loose punch to the head like that. Yeah. So, sensei, punch comes in. One. Here. the wrist. You can see in the mirror, my thumb is between senses thumb and forefinger. Yeah? So I'm going to do then, with this hand here, come the elbow out the way towards me. Now he's smaller than me. It's not hard to beat. Now I go like this here. And it's tight, it's nice, nasty, 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 nasty. If I yell it, that one. Okay. So, Send with the punch here. All right. I'll switch on. Go now. Let you see from the side. Okay. So let's let block here. From here. Okay. Let's 
step into the leg. Lock here. Thumb and forefinger. Like this. Finger. Collapse the elbow. Just do know that, I think. Down. Gentle. Here. Through. And classic wrist lock. Okay? Then we'll take it further from here. Right. Have fun. Thank you, sir.